Gazing towards the horizon, Neve noticed a dark shape outlined against the mantle of snow that lay on the ground. It proved a tower, toppled and broken in pieces. Around it lay the ruins of other buildings, blocks hewn out of basalt rock protruding from the permafrost. That'd be the Clan Vidmar ruins, said Gabor, hollering over the wind. Rich ones had their clan seat here till earth tremors turned all into dust. Hundreds of dwarves lived here once, and now... Not a living soul. Ah! Uh, help! Save me! On the contrary, there was someone midst the ruins, and said someone was clearly in trouble. Meave ordered her men to find the unfortunate soul. They returned moments later, leading a dwarf whose teeth chattered. They had found him in a ruined building where he'd sought shelter from ghouls. Judging by his appearance, the dwarf had spent the better part of a week there. Marco Vidmar, they call me, he said patting down unkempt hair that seemed to reach in all directions. I came here seeking a family heirloom, lost in the tremors and the chaos they caused. I came the chamber where it ought to be, but, well, beasts made the lair there. I cannot drive them off on my own, but bold warriors like you ought to cut them down in a jiffy. So, will you help? I too have lost my home, estate, said the queen. So I understand well what you feel. I shall help you recover your heirloom. Call it a win. Mirko Vidmar's face lit up. Though he'd spent a week besieged and eating stale biscuits, and though there was a hoarfrost in his beard, he quickly trotted to the front of the column and led the Lyrian soldiers to the underground chamber. As promised, beasts awaited there. Come, drive them back.
I'm coming, I'm coming. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Thing about slings, they hide well. Let's get a move on before any other show up. As soon as the fight was done, Mirko Vidmar ran towards a crate that stood on a pedestal, slipping on the now bloody floor. When the dwarf lifted the lid, precious stones spilled out. Your heirloom? This? Asked the queen, rather puzzled. I thought a pipe that belonged to your grandfather more likely. 
Seems to me Brother Murko was not wholly candid with us. This here's no heirloom, no family souvenir. It's the treasure trove of Clan Vidmar. We thought it gone for good. Pressed for the truth, Murko admitted no family sentiment had prompted this expedition. The dwarf had planned to leave Mahakam and start a new life among humans. Yet he did not wish to do so without sizable capital. I can't stand to stay here a moment longer. The days, all of them, they're identical. Rise with the first cockscrow, march in double file to the latrine, crap on command, twelve hours down the shaft and home to sleep. Mirko complained. Want to wifey? Put on an application? In triplicate? Care to snip your beard? Elders got to approve it. You want to add buttermilk, not cream to your mushroom soup? Clan council's got to debate it. How's a dwarf not to get balmy? I understand the lad, no two ways about it. Gabor sighed. But I feel it's my duty to remind you that what Murko's going and doing here, well, there are laws. Treasure's due the Elder in Chief, not to Murko. That's one. Second, any dwarf that wants to leave Mahakam can't take nothing but his breeches, his Dixie, and his coat. So, brief like, consider well afore you make your decision, Your Grace. I sympathize, Mirko, said Neve. But I'm a crowned head. I must decline. National interest requires I show the greatest possible care for my relations with Elder in Chief Hu. Yet in aiding you, I could sour those greatly. I shall return the treasure to him. I must. While you do what you will. Mirko Vidmar swore under his breath, then jostled his way through the Lyrian infantry and into the mountains towards human lands. The banner moves, blown by the wind. Downright poetic. Prime material for a ballad. Perhaps even a whole saga. The Lyrians rode a narrow, winding path along the rocky ridge. 
To one side were ice-covered boulders, to the other, a chasm hundreds of feet deep. They could have at least erected some barriers. Complained Gascon, knocking snow from his cap. Got plans for that, Gabor said. Just need to decide how high to make them. What? Think, shouldn't they be the height of your average dwarf or a human? The debate's gone on for 20 years. On the one hand, you've got... Gabor did not finish his discussion. He was interrupted by the Barbagazi that jumped down from the rocks. Archers, shoot! Aim for on the belly! Meave soldiers made quick work of the lone monster. But the sound of battle spooked the horses harnessed to one of her wagons. Whoa there! Whoa, damn it! The driver tried to rein in the animals, but could not. They dragged him into the chasm along with his cart and the soldiers riding it. They landed a few dozen feet below on a rocky outcropping. A moment later, Barbagazis swarmed everywhere. Did you see how they fared? Anyone left alive? Asked me, leaning over the cliff edge. Worry more about their cargo. Gascon replied. They were also carrying chests of gold. Blast. We can't get down there. Too steep and the snow keeps falling. We can lower ourselves down a line. But... Without armor, shields, or heavy weapons, otherwise it will snap. And the Barbagazis? The Queen said, brow raised. We shan't kill them with daggers. They're too thick of armor. We'll have to try. Or continue on our way. You only live once. Meave sighed. Gascon, round up some volunteers and let us move out. Moments later, the Queen was lowering herself down a line straight towards the gaping maw of a Barbagazi. Her only armor, a woolen shirt. The chase is on! Ever have a stone knock out one of your teeth? Oh, that was close. Bereft of sword and shield, Meave could not withstand a single blow. She thus danced atop the frozen snow, deftly dodging the Barbagazi's lightning-fast strikes while delivering but a few well-aimed hits of her own to their eyes, ears, and gaping jaws. When the last monster fell lifeless to the ground, Meave walked up to the shattered wagon. The soldiers it had carried were bruised, frostbitten, but alive. Your Grace, 
We were sure you'd leave us. A good ruler never abandons her folk. Nor her goal. Gascon interjected, while securing a rope to a chest. Soon enough, all were safely back on the path. The admiration Meave saw in her soldiers' eyes was in itself sufficient reward for her difficult battle. Braving the snow in those meager courts, are ye? Truly. <laughs> Thought of yourselves here for a spell of four moving on. Snow falls down and snow falls down and search the rain. Winds are howling, thrust are beating, la 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 la. Oh, it's cold as up a shell, man's ass. Sketches. Cards are blowing fair winds today. Got a bad case of rollers back.
Welcome to me end. With many folk to do, but there's always room enough for more. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. up a shale mass ass.
now witnessed a sorry sight. A mass funeral for miners killed due to a tragic convergence of events. Their lead caskets lay upon the snow, wreaths of hop cones laid upon them in turn. The mourners waited for the diggers to finish. The digging was tough, for the ground was frozen. As the crunch and thud of picks and shovels continued, the dead miners' foreman scrambled onto a boulder to make a speech. Angry shouts and loud booing stopped him. You knew it! You knew they'd smell vapors, but you ordered them to keep digging till it blew up in their faces! Make the daily quota whatever the cost, eh? You blood on your nuts, whore son! A mourner then picked up a chunk of frozen ground and threw it at the foreman. Blood spurted from the gash that appeared on his forehead. The first dirt chunk was followed by another, then by a rock, a brick. Meave realized that if she did not intervene, the foreman stood to be stoned to death. Something had to be done quickly. Meave saw this clearly. She spurred her mount and rode into the cemetery, pushing through the throng, then stopping before the foreman, the horse shielding him from further blows. Calm yourselves! Silence! His guilt cannot be decided here. It must! Before Meave could finish her plea, a large rock thrown from the crowd struck her bosom, nearly knocking her from her saddle. Upon seeing this, her Lyrian escort lowered spears and drew swords and rushed at the angry mourners. Shino! Isbel cried out. Her hands began to radiate a fierce light that blinded both dwarves and Lyrians alike. Have you lost your minds, all of you together? Not had your fill of misfortune yet? Lower your arms at once. Whether the power of Isbel's magic or the force of her appeal had the greater effect is difficult to say for certain. Either way, both sides suddenly lost the desire to fight. Meath breathed a sigh of relief. Aware that, if not for Isbel's intervention, a great amount of blood would have been spilled at that cemetery. Knew there'd be a stink cause of this. Knew there'd be a stink cause of this. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth?
pays late again. Greetings. What is it? Bit the white of an eye from half a league away. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Bigger they are, easier they are to tug. job to do. Hey, 
if anyone asks, you've not seen me. The Lyrians ascended the highest section of the Mahakam range. Snow crunched under their boots, cold air stung their lungs, and the wind snapped at their cloaks. <sighs> Meave wiped sweat from her brow and turned to Raynard. There! By the rocks! We shall... The rest of her words were drowned out by a powerful blast. The entire mountain rumbled with a low, vibrating roar. The sound grew louder, echoing off the rocks, splitting their ears. The Lyrians looked around, disoriented. Few heard Gabor's warning. Did I just stand there? Get behind that rock! Quick! Hurry! Me followed the dwarf's gaze and cried out in terror. The snow stuck to the mountainside had started to slide down the slope, sending up mists of icy dust. Before she could react, the white torrent knocked her to her knees, crushing her and smothering her into the ground. All she felt after that was all-encompassing cold and fear. Meave survived. The dwarves who ran to the Lyrian's rescue dug her out of the snow in time. Some of her soldiers were not so lucky. The queen looked at their bodies, blue, frozen. Next to them lay dead horses, demolished wagons. The losses were enormous. Meave wiped her cheek. Her tears burned her frozen skin. Gabor spoke a while with the leader of the Mahakam Guard Patrol that had come to their rescue. His face was dour. What? What have you learned? Uh, I'll tell you all in good time. First, you need a warm drink, good victuals. No, Gabor. I need to find out what in blazes happened here. Well, it was an avalanche. Of course it was an avalanche. I'm no fool. But what caused it? What was that noise? Um, <clears throat> Signal horns. Ours. So you brought this snow down on us. Dwarves. Well, I, but, uh, unawares. Explain, in brief. See, we clean our mount regularly. The, the, the way men folk shovel snow off their roofs. Otherwise, the whole shebang would come tumbling down in our heads. When snow's gathered deep enough, we'd blast our horns to cause a controlled avalanche. Then we need to but sweep up a wee bit and the road's safe. All well and good, but why did you decide to clean up right as I was passing through? I'm wondering that myself. Schedule says next cleaning should have been a week from now. But someone has the route to be cleared earlier. Who? Me, Eva. I'll tell you. But first, promise you'll... Who? Hey. Ovin Ep Klenvog. The Nilfgaardian emissary. Think it were meant as revenge for attacking their caravan. The bastard. Reynard. Reynard! Wait! Wait! I understand you're a wee bit upset. You've every right. You'll never prove Ovain meant you harm. 
The sly weasel make sure he didn't dirty his own paws. I've no such scruples. I'll find him and kill him. And then? How'd you tell that tale to Bruva? Meave, you're justly taught, but for the love, just this once, let it go. Or you'll leave Mahakam with me a scrap to show for it. Moments later, scouts reported Ovain was camped to the north of the accident site. Meave had to decide how much she was willing to risk to get her revenge on the Imperial Emissary.